And welcome to The Sit Down, where we have conversations with creators from across this beautiful motherland of ours. My name is Malcolm Boy, a filmmaker and an all-round story lover. And today we're sitting down with Kennedy Chalo, who's an amazing 3D artist, who's definitely pushing the boundaries when it comes to CG environments and animation itself here in Kenya. And today he's here with us to be able to tell us more about how he does what he does. So sit down and enjoy the conversation. So far, what do you feel um, the skill set that one needs to have to mm. be a 3D animator? First of all, you need to be an artistic person. I, I think that goes without saying. Mm. But you don't need necessarily need to be an awesome illustrator. You don't need to be able to draw like very well. Mm. Um, but you just need to be able to sketch some things, which most people can do. Uh, patience is another one, a huge one. And you also need to be a bit of a technical person. Some things do get technical at some point. It gets to a point where it's not even art anymore. It's just math and science. And you always have to power through all of that to get to the awesome stuff. You need uh, some basic understanding of film, photography, and how that world works. Because usually what we do is try to simulate reality. So basically, you're just a filmmaker who gets to art direct everything. So you need to understand uh, lenses and what different 24, 50 millimeter, what that does to your image. Um, you need to understand f-stops. You need to understand shutter speed. You don't really need to be like, you don't need to understand like in depth, but just, you know, a basic understanding, like knowing that if it's focal length, uh, the lower the number, the more distortion I get, the wider I see. And that's, that's enough. Um, you don't necessarily need to worry about how that affects your depth of field because depth of field is a diff a bit different in CG, mm. uh, but lenses do affect the distortion and and all of that. Um, shutter speed, not so much because you're working with frames. Um, F-stops, sometimes when you need to render depth of field into your image. But you know, yeah, just just basic, basics. Mm. Through, through these components, I mean, those are that's a combination of skill sets, man. That's like a, a computer scientist, photographer, interior design. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Modeling person in one. Production manager. Production manager. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, uh, what kind of physical tools do you need to be able to process such immense... Um, I can imagine that requires a lot of processing power. Yeah. Uh, what would be the starting point for someone who wants to jump in and, you know, at least... I get a good computer. Uh, I would say, at the very least, i5 with 16 GB of RAM and start from there. Um, storage isn't a problem. Uh, even graphics card isn't so much of an issue, especially when you're starting. Uh, but i5, 16 GB, and start from there. Uh, storage, you will upgrade storage whether you want it or not, because we generate so many files uh, that, that are huge. So it goes without saying that you will need a lot of storage. But for starters, you can just start with what you have and get a decent PC. 
if you're serious you can get a camera it doesn't have to be a good camera it just needs to be able to take pictures and what that allows you it allows you to understand the limitations that photographers go through and it helps you because the thing with cg is you get a perfect image from the computer like you click render you get a perfect image but that perfect image looks fake mm. now you have to go back and start adding imperfections these are the depth of fields uh mm. these are the chromatic abrasions mm. these are dust on the lens mm. things like that those are the things that make the shot look realistic mm. um so having a camera will help you like see those issues where they are and it will also you know help you understand working with lenses and shutter speeds and all of that stuff um also cameras are very useful for shooting textures um especially in africa just the same way photographers and filmmakers have websites where they can download assets and uh stock footage mm. there are also websites for cg assets and mm. textures and things like that mm. but since our industry in africa hasn't really grown mm. it's so hard for you to find localized assets like for instance if i go let's say um a shot that's happening on the street and i need a bunch of cars when I go to these websites and I search for cars, I won't find the cars that are available in our streets. Mm. Um, as you know, we buy cars that are five years old and other artists in the world, they will make the cars that they see on their streets and these are the 2020 models. So you won't find cars that look like the cars that you're used to seeing that's just an example our textures are a huge one the kind of soil that we have looks very different from <laughs> the soils that you will get uh, the way we do our buildings the finishes and all of those things are textures that you will need to shoot yourself um, that is take a picture of the wall with the bricks and then now you use that picture to texture your 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 3d environment um, so camera comes in handy for that usually uh this this is just some random character uh mm. this was the character i found close to me um so usually it starts as a sketch sort of like mm. this um ideally you're supposed to sketch the whole thing from front and side mm. but for this particular character i had the body ready which is another cheat that you you do is when you make like a body you can just keep that body and then in future you just change the head to get a different character um so that's why i i i just drew the head uh from the front and from the side um this is why i was saying that you need just a basic drawing skills um to be able to do this so to get the, the blueprint ready uh, once you get the blueprint then that usually modeling starts with one of these primitives could be a sphere cylinder or any of these start with this as so once i i just put a, a box here to illustrate my point once you have your box now you can start adding subdivisions to it to allow you to add more detail for instance if i wanted to make a car out of this box i would scale it i would scale it like that uh, add another subdivision in the middle mm. then i get this face and i extrude it out this way so i move it a bit to get the wind screen and then i extrude this like that and now we are getting somewhere so basically this is the idea behind that's the idea behind modeling um so i do that for for the character i did that for the head 
of the guy, which is this part. Mm. And um, the reason why I was saying you also need to be a production manager at the same time, you realize the dreadlocks are just where you will see them. Like, um, doesn't have dreadlocks all over. So you only make what the camera sees. Mm. Um, so dreadlocks. Um, once you're done with modeling, you need to dress up the character. Uh, I have a different software for that. Uh, so this is this is for making outfits. Uh, you know the head, but you usually draw the pattern on the side here. This is your 2D view, mm. and then that is represented here. The reason why we do it this way it gives you these nice wrinkles that mm. you wouldn't achieve by modeling. Mm. So once that is done, you export that and then bring it in. And now you go, the next step is usually texturing. And texturing is, um, you take your 3D model, can be a character, can be a car like this one, and then you flatten it into like a 2D representation of that. Mm. Um, if I make a cube real quick, to just uh, show that, uh, you be editor. So this is this is what's called a UV map for for the cube. You can see it's a it's a 2D representation of the cube. Yeah. Um, this is as basic as it gets. So this is one of the more complex ones. Yeah. Uh, again, just like with the other one, uh, when I look through the camera, this is the shot. Mm. Uh, this is the opening shot. Mm. Uh, yeah, so it sort of does that. And when I look outside, this is our camera. Mm. This is the street, and these are some characters. So you notice that I only put these characters on this on this street, and then the other ones, these two here. When I go to the beginning, they are starting their walk right before the street, because this is the street, yeah. and these are the characters. The idea is that uh, when I'm looking through the camera, which is behind here somewhere, mm. I see them crossed. Mm. And then this is the camera comes in. That's basically it. So it's just a row of flats along that muddy street. Yeah. And then a few flats at the end here, just to cover that space so that it's not empty. And then, yeah, and then that's it. Uh, when it comes to lighting, I have two big fixtures here. Mm. And the good thing with CG is you can just um, take your light and just make it as bright as possible, mm. as much as you want. There are no limitations. So I have this. This is the light fixture that lights this whole street. Yeah. And then this one is for adding some contrast between this street and the outer street there. Okay. When you look at the shot, um, this part is supposed to be a bit colder. Yeah. Because um, it's in and the shadow. this is warm. Yeah. Yeah, because it's, it's in the sun. shadow. I think this is warm. Yeah. yeah. So um, I'm using this light fixture to make that contrast. Mm. Um, because if I removed this, everything would be dark. So I'm just using this to mimic the light that's coming in. And then we have the smaller light fixtures on the lamp posts just to add that accent. Mm. Uh, just to add this. Yeah. It's accent over here um, to bring attention to these characters, and then there's yeah. a light in here to show the shop and the gas cylinders and things like that. Does it autom automate the reflections, or do you have to create the reflections of the reflections of the water 
everything has a ma- material applied to it and the material is what uh, sort of determines the reflections if for instance i were to show you some of the textures that i used for that but look at the skuma first so there's that shot with skuma at the end mm. uh, towards the end of the music video mm. so this image this is a picture that represents the color of the skumas so i'm using these pictures just to plaster them on onto my model mm. and this is the color mm. now we have this is called a bump map and basically what it does it uses the black and white values to tell the computer where to cheat bumps so where it's white it sort of appears like it's raised up mm. and where it's black it sort of appears like it's going down so this would simulate these veins and stuff and this is called a specular map and what it does is where it's white is most reflective mm. and where it's black it's not reflective at all so um these spots are, are supposed to be droplets because water is like 100 percent reflective like a mirror mm. uh, and the skuma itself is a bit reflective but not quite reflective as a mirror mm. uh, but not black if it were black to be it would mean it's not reflective at all it's like a fabric mm. and then the veins and the stalk they are a bit somewhere in between they are a bit more reflective than the leaf itself i think that was good and i think at this point i should say thank you so much for sharing amazing amazing knowledge i feel like mm-hmm. I, I am in school all over again yeah why are there so many buttons <laughs> exactly um if anyone mm-hmm. wants to you know dm you say hello ask mm-hmm. a question how do they find you they can find me through my social media platforms uh on facebook i'm kennedy charlo uh on twitter it's kennedy underscore artists on Instagram is Kennedy underscore artist. And for fellow artists out there, I'm on Beans and at station as Kennedy Charlo. Thank you for having me. And I look forward to working with you in the future on a lot of things that we have planned. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man. Have an amazing, have an amazing, amazing day. You too. And thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for being with us through this whole journey. It's been quite an amazing second season. See you in the next one.